Welcome back. Um, we're going to have an R session now, this time on model selection. So uh, we've got a script ready. Um, we're going to look at uh, using validation sets, cross-validation for selecting the tuning parameters in, in stepwise regression, lasso, ridge regression and the like. Um, this will be broken up into a few sessions. And we're going to do something a little different this time. In the past, I've just shown you an R script that we've used in R Studio, where we click through the commands. Well, this time we're going to do it in a, um, also in R Studio, but using um, something called Markdown mode. And what that is, is it's a way of merging text with um, R code. Um, and at the end of the day, you can produce a, a document, in this case, a HTML document or a web page. And as you'll see, it's just about as easy to do as, as using a script, and, uh, and it just becomes much more useful, especially for making demonstrations. So let's see how this works. Okay, so here's our Markdown um, script. It's the beginning of it. And you'll see it's got actual just text written in the beginning that says this is an R do Markdown document, and, uh, and it's got model selection at the top and it's underlined with a double, with equal signs. And there's a few conventions in Markdown. I'll just click this help pane over here. And you see the very simple instructions on how to structure Markdown um, on the right. So you, it's very easy to learn. And the R code actually sits in chunks. And so here's a chunk over here. And uh, we just execute code in the chunks just like we did before. Notice the chunks begin with this um, back, back quote, back quote, back quote, and then R, it's a little incantation, which you can invoke by using a keystroke. Um, and we execute the commands just as before. So here we are, we go library uh, hit, uh, ISLR, and the, we're going to use the hitters database, which is a baseball database, which uh, has a recording of a whole lot of statistics for different day baseball players, um, and including uh, a response variable, salary, which we're going to use as the target for a regression model. And so there we see salary. We notice it's got a bunch of missing values, 59 missing values, which is going to be a little unpleasant for us. So uh, we're going to do something about that. But just for the moment, look at the summary and you can see all the names of the variables. These are statistics um, that have been collected during the you know, baseball season. And we're going to try and use these statistics to predict the salary of the, the player. So, um, missing values are, there are various ways of dealing with them. We're going to take the easy way out here, and we're going to eliminate any row in the data frame that's got a missing value in it. And there's a nice function called na.omit that does that for you. And we run na.omit, and that'll produce a new data frame, which we just overwrite on hitters here, and uh, it won't have any missing values. It'll have less rows, of course. And then we can just check if there's any NAs in, in, in this new data frame hitters. And here we use our with function again, because it's kind of cute. So with data frame hitters, look at the sum of any, well, is NA. Are there any NAs in the variable salary? And when we do that, we get zero, which is what we expected. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how to do best subset regression. So if you recall from the, from the lectures, best subset regression looks through all possible regression models of all different subset sizes and looks for the best of each size and so produces a sequence of models which is the best subset for each particular size. Okay, and that sounds like a lot of work, but luckily we've got a library called Leaps that'll do that for us. And there's a function in Leaps called reg subsets that will do, the, do the best subset re, uh, modeling for us. And so here yeah, we, we assign to reg fit dot full um, this reg subsets with salary as a response. It takes a formula and the data is hitters. And it's amazingly fast. Um, we've got, you know, we've got over 200 um, baseball players here and uh, it did all subsets and we got 19 variables and it did all, all subsets regression in no time at all. And if we do a summary, we get a kind of printout of, that summarizes the best subset models. And what it does is, for each subset size, for, so for example, subset size 1, 
it show, puts a star next to the variable that's in the best subset of size 1. So that's CRBI. And then the best subset of size 2, of course there's going to be 2 with stars, and 3 and so on. And uh, for the beginning it looks like these subsets are nested, but they don't have to be nested. And if you study this, this output, you'll see that at some point they're not nested. Um, and so that's one way of looking at our best subset. Um, by default, it only goes up to subsets of size 8. Maybe that's why it was so fast. But we've got 19 variables, so we're going to actually go all the way and get best subsets all the way up to size 19. So we'll run that one. Well, that was just as fast. It's instantaneous. And if we do the summary of that, um, well, we didn't print it out, but uh, we, we ran the summary. And we'll, uh, and, and then we'll look at the oops, beg your pardon, uh, names in the summary. And the summary, you know, we've just now printed the summary, but um, this tells you what's on the summary. And it has various things. Like for each of the models, the best subset models, it has the R squared, the residual sum of squared, the, the adjusted um, R squared, the CP statistic, the BIC statistic, and a few other things. All the things that um, we're going to use to help us select um, the, a, a particular model. So happily, there's a plot method for... for um, well, actually, there's not. We're going to plot the CP component of reg summary. Um, we'll just make our own plot. There it is. And remember, CP is an estimate of prediction error. And here it's plotted. We plotted it against the number of variables and the CP statistic. And the idea is to pick a model with the lowest CP. Well, in this case, it looks like the model with 10 variables is, is the smallest. And we can just use the function which.min to identify the smallest um, index of the smallest element of the CP component. And let's just uh, annotate our plot by indicating the point that we've chosen, the, the best subset model. There we used points to color the point red, the one that's going to be the chosen model. So that's pretty straightforward, using CP to do best subset selection using the function uh, reg subsets. Um, there is a plot method for the uh, reg subsets um, object. It wasn't the one I was that we just produced. Um, so let's use it. And it's a it's like a pattern picture. And at first, you have to figure out how to interpret this plot. What it shows is on this axis here is the CP statistic. Small is good, so this is the smallest CP. This will have corresponded to our model of size ten. And then you see CP getting worse and worse. And then for each value of CP or each unique value of CP, it, black squares are ones indicating that variable's in, and white squares are the variables are out. Okay? And so it's an interesting picture. So what you notice is near the bottom of the CPs, the models are reasonably stable. Like this whole band stays the same. There's a little bit of fluctuation over here. What you also notice is that as we should expect from that previous plot, that bad CPs corresponded to models that had all the variables in or ones that had hardly any variables in. And so, you know, you get used to interpreting this plot. And it's, it's you know, it, it sort of gives a quick summary of all the models as opposed to just seeing the CP statistics. And now, having chosen model 10, there's a coefficient method for, for reg subsets. And we ask it for the coefficients for model for the model indexed 10, and we get a coefficient vector, and it gives you the coefficients of those variables that those 10 variables that are in the model, and there they are. Okay, well, so that's the end of the first little session. We'll 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 carry on with subsequent sessions using different methods for model selection. Before we leave, I want to show you how you actually get a nice um, summary of the HTML file of everything that we've done so far. So you'll notice at the top here, there's a command knit HTML. So we're going to issue that. And 
it shows us, it's, this is the web page that shows us everything that we've done, but it's formatted nicely. So we get all our commands, we get headings, the model selection, we get our commands, the text is nicely formatted, and we also get the output. The R output is commented with, with two hashes on the side, and then any graphic that we uh, any graphic that we produced also appears in this plot. So that's a very nice way of retaining everything that you've done um, in, in the R session.